this video is on chapter 8 health and hygiene we will be learning about the prevention of diseases unhealthy habits and lifestyle and about first aid in this video so let's start learning about the prevention of diseases human beings possess some natural mechanisms that enable them to fight pathogens and remain healthy the natural barriers include the skin mucous membranes tears ears wax mucus and stomach acid also the normal flow of urine washes out microorganisms that enter the urinary tract the immune system uses white blood cells which are present in the blood and antibodies which are proteins to identify and eliminate organisms that get through the body's natural barriers tears wash away germs from the eyes mucus lining in the nasal cavity traps germs and purifies the air that is inhaled inside the wbcs in the blood attack invading germs the strong acids in the stomach kill many germs in food and the skin acts as a barrier and keeps most of the germs outside thus the body is having a natural defense of mechanism to fight against diseases diseases can be prevented by maintaining personal and community hygiene personal hygiene is taking care of one's own body maintaining cleanliness and avoiding germs community hygiene is the collective effort to keep the community clean like for example using the washrooms in a proper way in school or in any public place or disposing waste in a proper way which will help in preventing germs and diseases unhealthy habits and lifestyle also should be avoided to keep diseases away some unhealthy habits are eating junk food not eating at the proper time improper lifestyle is for example getting up very late in the morning and sleeping very late at night and not exercising regularly so these are some examples of unhealthy habits and lifestyle this will definitely bring a disturbance in the health of an individual vaccination is another additional way of boosting immunity against specific diseases such as chicken pox hepatitis poliomyelitis and so on vaccines are specific because one vaccine which works for a particular disease will not work for another disease so we say they fight against specific diseases let us look at some of the general methods of preventing communicable diseases communicable diseases can be avoided firstly by preventing exposure to infectious microorganism to prevent exposure to airborne microbes we should live in healthy and hygienic conditions for example municipal waste dumped near by the house and if it is left uncleaned this will be a breeding place for many microorganisms which will be airborne and they will lead to diseases to prevent waterborne infections we should drink clean and safe drinking water water can be treated to kill microbial contamination by boiling or by other methods like filtration vector borne infections can be avoided by cleaning our surroundings so that disease carrying vectors will not flourish there example mosquitoes and fl house flies should be avoided because they are vectors for many diseases thus public hygiene is a basic key to prevention of infectious diseases secondly we can avoid communicable diseases by having proper and sufficient food the functioning of the immune system is dependent on the type of nutrients the body receives thus eating a balanced diet is necessary for the prevention of a disease a diet which will have enough nutrients vitamins and various other factors responsible for boosting our immunity let us learn more about the natural defenses and what is immunity 
sometimes even when the air food and water around us is full of pathogens they enter the body but we always do not fall ill this is because the body is having natural defense mechanism they are the skin the white blood cells and the mucus which will ward off infections apart from the natural defenses the body also has another special system of defense which is known as the immune system when any pathogen enters into the body the immune system makes antibodies these antibodies are proteins they will attack the foreign body that enters into the body and it will prevent diseases so when a microorganism enters inside the body specific antibodies are produced in the blood and those antibodies will fight against the microorganism after the person recovers the antibodies will remain in the blood for some time and they will prevent the disease from occurring again this type of natural resistance that has been developed by the body is called immunity so once you are exposed to a particular microorganism you will develop enough antibodies so that the second time the microorganism enters and if it is the same microorganism you will already have the antibodies inside you fight the infection this type of immunity provided by a person's body towards a particular disease may be short term or it may be permanent the antibodies developed against certain infections remain in the blood for a long period of time and therefore on second exposure to the bacterial infection or the viral infection the antibodies are ready to fight but immunity to some bacterial diseases like diphtheria and typhoid they will last only few years the antibodies will remain only for a brief period and after the antibodies disappear from the blood the immunity against the disease is lost for immunity is the ability of a body to recognize and resist a specific infection or a toxin by releasing antibodies against it to understand how important the immune system is we will take one case of a disease called aids which is caused by infection by hiv human immunodeficiency virus in this condition the body's immune system is affected many of the symptoms of hiv are due to the body's immune system getting weakened so in this case the body will lose its ability to fight small infections also for example a cold can become pneumonia or a minor gut infection can produce major diarrhea it is because of subsequent infections that people suffering from aids actually die thus the immune system is important in fighting infections vaccination is another additional method of boosting immune system what is a vaccine vaccine is a biological preparation it is made from a weakened or a killed form of the microorganism this is injected to improve immunity to a particular disease vaccination is the administration of a weakened or killed pathogen to stimulate the immune system and this is to develop resistance against that pathogen a vaccine can be injected or it can be taken orally once the vaccine enters into the body the vaccine triggers the immune system and produces antibodies against specific disease causing microorganisms for example if the vaccine is for chicken pox antibodies will be produced to fight the chicken pox virus the antibodies attack and destroy the weakened microbe that has been injected and they remain in the blood in future if there is any attack of that particular pathogen then these antibodies will be ready to fight that microorganism in this way the body develops immunity against a particular disease vaccines are given to children between the age of 6 weeks and 10 years against common infections such as diphtheria whooping cough tetanus polio measles mumps rubella chicken pox meningitis etc 
some of these vaccinations have to be repeated after a few years because they will not provide lifelong immunity the vaccine dose which is repeated after a few years is called booster dose some important vaccines for infants and children are the bcg the oral polio vaccine and the dpt bcg gives protection against tuberculosis the oral polio vaccine protects against polio the dpt diphtheria pertussis and tetanus vaccine gives protection against diphtheria pertussis which is whooping cough and tetanus Diphtheria is a serious infection of the nose and throat. Tetanus is a bacterial disease which causes spasms and eventually will lead to death. Children above one year of age are given the measles vaccine, which protects against measles. Chicken pox vaccine, which protects against chicken pox. The MMR measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, which will protect against measles, mumps, and rubella. and the tetanus toxoid or the tt which will protect against tetanus please remember that vaccines are specific a vaccination against a particular disease such as measles will protect against measles only typhoid vaccine will protect the person from typhoid only so that way vaccines are specific